Hello and welcome to Budget Model Railways. And so we've got an update on my uh, shunting layout. It's quite a lot of progress being done uh, because I've had, managed to get a bit of free time um, and there's not a lot of this to do, so it's it's not taken too bad. Um, but I've called this video my ideal shunting layout, not the ideal, because this is just to suit what I do. And I think that's important with model railways. What you should be doing is what works for you, what's right for you, not what other people tell you that you should have on a, a layout or it should have this or it should have that. And obviously I'm greatly helped here by doing freelance model railways um, because I'm not then constrained about, if, if I'd done this as a standard British UK, then you'd have a station and set place and a good shed and it would have the same station and good shed as everybody else's railways. By being freelance, I'm able to say, right, what can I use for a station building? Well, that's the little gauge master cottage used as a station building. I've blanked the end windows off to give it a bit more room. I find they've got too many windows. Put some flower boxes in. I've got a Pico bus shelter there being used as the station shelter, and I've got some quite nice figures. Um, same really on the goods shed. So I believe that's a Marklin goods shed, but it happened to be right. Um, the little depot here, with a little Wickham trolley came second hand from an American set as did and I'll try not to pan too quickly a little signal cab in there um, and the reason again why I call it ideal is because this is if you like the culmination of very nearly nine years of making layouts so I'm not trying to be a smart ass um, I haven't learned any of these things over quickly but they might help some people um, to try and get their, their layouts right. So for me it's ideal because it fits a very small space because it's N, it's just on my desk there. It's only three feet by 10 inches. In double O that would have to be six foot by 20 inches, uh, which wouldn't fit my desk and wouldn't fit just about anywhere that I have. It's very light. It's built on a IKEA um, cantilever shed unit, shelf unit. I can pick it up effectively with one hand. That's important because this area gets hot, it gets a lot of direct sunshine. And I can literally pick this up, turn it upside down, which is why everything's stuck down, and it's then out of the sun, which is the intention. It's got a two-road fiddle yard. I find fiddle yards very useful on shunting layouts and the controller's fixed in. I literally have to plug the adapter in and I can play trains. Uh, and unlike a double O, I don't have to have a separate fiddle yard on this one to be attached. I can literally just attach the adapter and I'm away. Now, I've gone, I haven't done it in rural apart from one of the first couple of oval ones I did. All my shunting layouts have been very industrial. So this one I wanted to do rural. I did get lucky with a track plan with some experimentation. I've got away from the classic run it along in a straight line along the edge of the board, simply by experimenting by putting a curve in one side of the loop which means the entrance track and the head shunt are then at angles. I put in the third siding and then realised I could get a little kickback siding. And I've been doing quite a bit of shunting and it works really well. It also means that those three tracks can effectively be used as an inglenook siding puzzle, shunting puzzle, which gives me almost endless, endless shunting. Um, the gantry crane is a little 3D printed one Doug made me. Uh, a lot of these packagings and that sort of thing come from a company called 3D Plus on eBay, as does the um, forklift. The figures, I like to set little scenes. I don't like people just stood there. So we've got a couple of guys nattering by the forklift, pointing out something and one's got a tool bag. Um, there's a photographer on the end of the platform there. Uh, and people scattered around. There's a guy talking, the porter is talking to a customer. There's a couple there having a chat. Um, and there's a couple of people working hard and busy in the goods yard. The lorry is a um, resin printed war games lorry, actually. It's an Opal Blitz. Uh, one of the nice things about N is it's more or less the same as one 144th or 10 millimeter. Uh, and again, a few people have taken me to task. What N gauge is this? You know, you're using Japanese and Continental and British. I don't care. It's all close enough when you're doing freelance not to worry. The track is Pico set track. It's really something Pico set track. The geometry on it, it just goes together. I do use secondhand track. That has been problematic. Fish plates and things tend to get bashed and they're not easy to get off. Um, but it, it obviously saves costs. I bought those points for £3 each from Classic Rail. That's about a quarter of what they are new. 
It's on ballast mat, and you know I use ballast mat, particularly in N. I've got no time for ballasting. And with that being brown, it seems to blend it even better than normal. Um, the roads are a self-adhesive reel of road material that Doug found me on eBay. So that literally took minutes to cut out. The hills are the usual, so they're the black plastic foam. But I tried something different. I wanted to cover them because you get this kind of holy effect on the foam. And I've seen people using kitchen towel and that worked very well. Kitchen towel and PVA. And then I've just put scatter on top. Scatter in my mind looks absolutely fine in N. The trees are an assortment that I got cheap from China. Um, and they look fine for me on a little engage layout. The point for me is I want to do projects that will come together quite quickly. I don't want to spend years or months building it. I want to be able to build and get on. I got extremely lucky with the back scene. So this is one of my favourites. It's actually hay on Y, uh, Ross on Y, um, as it happens. But I just got lucky that when it ran round, it follows the contours of the layout. It starts low there. And then it builds up over the hill. You've got a town then on the hill, and I've left the church visible in a few buildings. And it really looks like it was made for the layout, but it just genuinely wasn't. Because I don't plan, I couldn't buy a, uh, um, a back scene to suit the layout. It's literally, I just got lucky. And again, it was the cheapest, so that was good. I liked the idea of an overbridge that I took from a couple of articles in Continental Modeler. So rather than the kind of hackneyed hill and tunnel mouth, the idea is it carries on under the bridge. Um, and you know from the last video that I, I made the uh, stonework there from scribing mounting board. Um, so there we go. It's absolutely fantastic with the Kato Freelance stuff, uh, the Freelance Locos. I've got four of those now because I managed to get them cheaply. I would like to get another tram, um, but unfortunately the only other one available has a load of Japanese writing down the side, which doesn't really suit. Um, on the pictures, interesting on everybody's website, it shows it's plain white, but they're not. I learned the hard way. Um, so it really couldn't be much simpler. The That's um, Metcalf tarmac paper. Um, the platforms were grey mounting board, picture framing card, and it happens to have a nice grey speckled finish. So I just left it. I've used self-adhesive labels to do the white lining on the platform edges, which seems to have worked well. So it's given me a little rural end to my Astravian State Railways, because that's where we still are. We're on Astravia State Railways. Um, but rather than all the industrial scenes, this is a little rural terminus, end of a branch line. But it's a busy branch line. It's got a, a regular passenger service and it's got an awful lot of goods. In my mind, Astravia's kept its goods traffic uh, for all sorts of reasons. So there's lots of pickup goods, lots of things coming in and out. Um, hence the two busy goods yard scenes. And I think that's an awful lot in three foot by, it's actually nine and a half inches. It's taken me a couple of weeks to build. Um, although I admit I get a bit more free time than most people um, being retired, even with the army cadets intruding quite a bit these days. Um, but the advantage again of a smaller end layout is there's not a lot to build. So actually, although I'm really pleased with the look of this, there's nothing very complicated about it. Um, the grass in the front there was a bit of Javis ballast mat I had lying around. Uh, the cantanary moths are Kato. I do have a few stick-on flowers to come to brighten it up a bit, but I've used a lot of tufts and things to blend in. The hedge there was just done the usual way. Um, pan scourer dipped in scatter. And there we are. It just works well. Um, I will... I will, I am planning and I will do a running video. They're a bit more complex to do on my phone. Uh, so I might wait a few days till Doug's home from university uh, and get him to do it on his big camera so that we can do a, a better shunting one. So for me, that's the ideal shunting or switching layout for our American friends. And we have quite a lot of those. Um, it's simple. There are only four points in the actual layout and one on the fiddle yard. The point for the fiddle yard is before the tunnel mouth. So I can just switch it from this end. And in fact, if I wanted, I could speculate that the point is there and there's two branch lines that come down in and that will double the operational ability. And I am going to try and write a timetable for this because I've always wanted to run a timetable layout to have the fun of a reason for trains coming in and out. So I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. I know it's N, but actually you could do this in O. 
If you had six foot by 20 inches, you could copy this exactly and still have an awful lot of fun with it. It would just take you slightly longer. I couldn't do it as UK purely because of the really now unbelievably high cost of UK locomotives and rolling stock. Um, and what's done in for me is these locos. It is the Kato Pocket Line loco sets. Currently about 40, 45 pound new for a loco and two wagons. Even that is available for around the 45, 50 pound mark for a little um, EMU. The wagons are cheap from Kato and Pico Engage wagon kits are cheap. So I'm having a lot of fun with this. I've got a little bus stop over there as well with a taxi in it, a bit of a car park. So lots of scenes. I like to try and bring my layout to life. Um, I think that's important. People, things going on, um, but actually quite a simple layout. It's just a rural scene, but the hill works, drags the eye and it stops it just being flat. I do like it, my railways to look as if the railway is going through the landscape and not on it, which I think with this blending the back scene in um, and the hill I've achieved. So for me, this is probably the best shunting switching layout I've ever built. And I've built quite a few because I've been able to bring together a lot of experience, a lot of ideas in one place. Keep it simple, keep it compact, um, make sure I've got a home for it and it works. So for me, it is great. I just plug in a controller, did it just a little bit earlier and, and shunted trains for half an hour. Um, really nice. So I'm pleased with this. Hope you're enjoying it. I so say don't be put off its end. You could do it in double O or Z or G or whatever you whatever it is you like. Um, it is just a format that seems to work. So I look forward to your comments uh, and and as always, um, and we'll have another video out soon.